And today we are uh, uh, going to cover uh, chapter two. And last last week we uh, talk about the uh, analog digital signal data and uh, also the general issue about the phys some general issue about the physical layer. Uh, and we are c talking about the coding from uh, source coding to channel coding and then uh, line coding. And here we are talking about the line coding uh, regarding uh, to uh, encode the data stream, bit stream into digital signal. Uh, and here the consideration, uh, the, game, the rule of the game is about uh, synchronization. First of all, that you want to uh, synchronize the clock uh, of the receiver with the sender. So in order to synchronize the receiver clock with the sender, you need to keep, the, keep having the transition. Uh, I mean the signal change in a digital waveform so that the receiver clock will know okay this is a, the start of a bit or uh, the end of a bit okay so so this is important if you have a signal digital waveform that uh, remain constant in voltage for a period of time then it's possible that the receiver clock will lose synchronization with the sender's clock. So you want to keep uh, synchronized, keep changing the signal in the digital waveform. And another issue is that uh, you might have baseline wandering, meaning uh, uh, you, sh you have you, you are not, uh, the receiver is not clear about the, 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 the start and the end of a bit time. So if I, if I have a time shift, time drift a little bit, and I sample, the receiver sample the signal level, uh, perhaps uh, it should sample at a, within that bit interval. But due to the uh, time drift, it might sample at the wrong spot so that it probably sample the previous bit or the next bit. Okay, so that's because the time shift. So you want to maintain, so if, if synchronization is about the <coughs> clock interval, then uh, baseline wandering is, is about the, the start of that interval the start and end of that interval need to be uh, correct. <coughs> and then a third issue is the DC component, meaning uh, the signal uh, should not go to, it's about the shift of the voltage or the energy, shouldn't go always all to the positive voltage or the negative voltage. So you want to uh, have the average voltage maintained at zero, the best will be maintained at zero, then you would, you would have uh, no DC component. Otherwise, you would have DC component or DC bias that uh, perhaps uh, on the average, the, the, the signal level is, say, uh, uh, two voltage, then it's not good. You want to maintain the average voltage at zero. Otherwise, it will consume more power. This this would not. Uh, this is not about the 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 correctness of the receiver in detecting or sampling the the, the signal level, but it's about the energy consumption. So you want to swing positive and also negative, and on the average, you keep your voltage at zero. So that's the principle for line coding. And we will talk about uh, many uh, in coding, line coding scheme. And some of them have synchronization problems. Some of them have baseline wonder. Some of them have DC component. 
but some of them have uh, resolved all of these. <coughs> but perhaps with the with the, with some price to pay. Okay, and another issue is about the modulation, digital modulation. That uh, you remember last week we talked about uh, <coughs> to your digital waveform uh, need to in order to to tra travel for a longer distance, you need to uh, transform your digital waveform into the analog waveform. Uh, so that uh, it can travel uh, far. And the way to do that is to uh, take that uh, digital waveform and modulate with uh, a carrier signal, a carrier signal, uh, and then uh, it will become uh, uh, an analog waveform. So we'll talk about uh, the carrier signal. And the carrier signal can be uh, can be can do the job uh, can can do the modulation in different form with the data bit stream. Uh, it could be in amplitude modulation, frequency, or, or phase or code. So in different format, we can uh, do the modulation, and we will see that uh, how how they can be done. And also, we talk about the impairment. Uh, there are some terminology that you probably need to differentiate them. Some of them are subtle difference. For example, the <coughs> attenuation, meaning the the energy, the signal energy will will be lost uh, as you travel. So there's an attenuation. <coughs> How about fading? Uh, fading is a kind of attenuation. But it's time varying, time varying uh, de deviation uh, when uh, traveling uh, across uh, the space or the line. And two kinds of fading, uh, multi-path fading and shadow fading. Uh, multi-path fading means uh, that uh, uh, the signal travel across multiple paths. And each of them suffer different uh, attenuation, and in combined together, uh, there'll be uh, multi-path fading. And some uh, another will be shadow fading that are uh, shadowed by obstac obstacles. Uh, perhaps you, when you penetrate the wall, and uh, the fading will be much severe. <coughs> Another term is distortion, meaning uh, this happens to uh, composite, composite, composite signals. Uh, when you have signal uh, have different uh, frequency component, frequency component, and these uh, three different component within that com composite signal will suffer different degree of uh, attenuation. Okay. So say high frequency probably uh, suffer uh, more than the low frequency. Then combined together, they suffer a different degree of attenuation. Then the signal, the shape of the signal at the receiver will be quite different from the shape of the signal at the sender. And that's called distortion. Another term will be the interference and noise. Interference and, no and noise are similar, but uh, interference is about uh, you, you suffer the interference from another uh, data signal, another signal which carry data. So, so, so for example, you have a co-channel interference or some, sometimes called crosstalk, inter-symbol interference, inter-carrier interference. So these, the source of the interference is uh, another signal carrying the uh, user data. So it's likely that it would be uh, persistent. Okay. And noise is, is not. It's, it's not, uh, probably it's, it's not uh, the user signal. 
it's a, a random fluctuation. Uh, by like a microwave, when somebody is using the microwave, the, that might generate noise. Uh, or or some, someone is using the cellular phone, that might interfere with uh, uh, another, um, uh, say, your mic, mic, microphone. My, the microphone might interfere with the cellular and vice versa. So, so it's a random fluctuation. Uh, so it's subtle different uh, from uh, interference. Okay, and these are all called uh, impairments uh, that would uh, degrade the quality of the signal uh, received at a, at a receiver. Okay, uh, before uh, we close uh, section 2.1, there's a sidebar on uh, software-defined radio. <coughs> uh, in recent years, uh, uh, the industry uh, has uh, more solution on software-defined radio. And there's an open source project that uh, uh, that has a solution, uh, a Linux-based solution that uh, help uh, developers to develop a radio uh, solution, the the coding modulation solution on subwell, on the subwell platform. Okay, and perhaps you might think that this uh, coding and modulation should be done in hardware and in the interface car and strictly by, by hardware. But base, but in fact, it, it could be done in software. And we, we mentioned that uh, if a protocol is time critical, then it should be done in hardware, right? And if a protocol is not time critical, it could be done in software. Then how come uh, this uh, modulation and coding they are time, of course, they are time critical, time sensitive. How come they are put into the software? That's the first question you, you need to answer. The second question is, why isn't it hardware uh, more efficient and, than software? So why the previous hardware solution might not be better? Okay, then the subway solution. So answer the first question. <coughs> okay, if of course the, the, the subway is not executed on the main CPU on your motherboard of the computer. Say I uh, I have a processor for to put to handle the protocol or the link layer and above, the protocol of the link layer and above. But then I cannot use that processor to do the physical layer stuff. I would use dedicate uh, a processor to do the uh, coding and modulation together. So, so that'll be a dedicated processor on the inter for that interface for the physical layer. So that's the first thing. So say for example, if it's uh, not a serial phone, it's a computer or a, a, a laptop, or laptop or a, a pad. Then uh, I would have a, a processor associated with that physical interface. Okay, that processor is dedicated for that purpose, not uh, to be shared with the, the other protocol processing. So that's the first question. You need a dedicated processor. The second question would then, uh, why software? Why not just hardware? Uh, the reason is because uh, as we, um, as the device, uh, need to handle more network interface. Say, uh, I need to handle Bluetooth, I need to handle uh, GSM, I need to handle 3G, I need to handle WiMAX, LTE. So there'll be, there'll be multiple interface, maybe Zigbee. And some of them are, are have quite uh, similar processing in coding and, and modulation. 
However, I still have need, I need to have that uh, separate interface for each of them. So for each of them, I would have a probably a chipset or a chipset with different modules, and those chipset or modules they would occupy the circuit space, the space for the circuit. So for each interface, I need to have a dedicated area to for the physical layer, and that might uh, be costly. And so costly because uh, uh, I need a module and space for each interface. And non-flexible, meaning uh, if I have a chip roll out with this set of interface, later on I want to have I want to uh, support another interface or another chip version, then uh, I need to roll out roll out design and roll out another chip i cannot do it on this chip so because of the co co the consideration of cost of a multi mode or multi interface physical layer and also for the flexibility in um, updating uh, this uh, this uh, physical layer so it's better to put it into software so, so the the th this figure is basically very very similar to this one that we have shown. So you start from the the source and sink to the sink, and in the middle you have coding, multiplexing, and, and modulation. So you can put uh, these in in uh, from by software, and a lot of, a lot of them. The coding and module, a lot of them are about uh, uh, doing the calculation or doing the mapping or table lookup or, or doing uh, and or not logical operations. So the, all this could be done in software. And the next question will be, the third question will be, uh, what is the separation between hardware and software? Then you will see that uh, if you need to do uh, uh, more calculation, the calculation and the uh, uh, lookup, table lookup, or uh, logical operation, they can be put into software. And the other could be put into hardware. So there will be a, uh, some uh, design with these uh, sequence, some of them in software, some of them in hardware. And then, then uh, there'll be uh, interaction between hardware and software. Okay. And in the um, at the end of this chapter, in the hands-on exercise, uh, pro I think uh, problem number three and four, uh, uh, it's it asks you to um, try the software-defined radio solution. It's, a, it's an open source project uh, running on Linux. However, I, I didn't pick it uh, in this homework because that w might take a long time to try. And uh, so, so I skip uh, those two. But if you are interested in uh, trying out the, the software design on previously hardware, solutions, then uh, you can try uh, uh, hands-on exercise number three and four.